Hey folks, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at the Bohr model of the atom. So let's get started. Now the Bohr model of the atom was something that was seen in higher physics, but we'll also look at it in a bit more detail in advanced higher physics. Firstly, it says that classical physics postulated a model of the atom, which was like a small solar system, i.e. a central nucleus with orbiting electrons. And this was Rutherford's model of the atom, and I'll just show you a quick simulation to show you how this looks. So if you look here, you can see we've got a positively charged nucleus in the centre of the atom, and then we've got electrons which orbit in circular motion around the nucleus of the atom. And this is one of the most basic models of the atom that we can think of. However, there's a problem with this classical physics model of the atom, and we can think about some kinematics from the rotational motion topic to help us understand this. And the problem is that since the electrons are negatively charged, then they should emit electromagnetic radiation and therefore spiral in towards the nucleus. But we know that that doesn't happen. And the reason I know they should emit electromagnetic radiation is because any charged particle which is accelerating should do that. And we know that these electrons are accelerating to stay in a circular orbit. And that, remember, is called a centripetal acceleration caused by a centripetal force, which is due to electrostatic forces at play here. And we can also tell they're accelerating because they're constantly changing direction to stay in that circular motion. And even if the electrons are moving at a constant speed in the orbit, they can still have a change in velocity and therefore an acceleration. Since they're constantly changing direction and because velocity is a vector where we care about a magnitude and a direction, if the direction's changing, then the velocity itself must be changing. So we're saying the problem with this model is that the electrons should emit radiation, lose energy, and therefore spiral in towards the nucleus, but we know that that doesn't happen. So there must be something else going on here. So it says that since electrons have negative charge, they should emit radiation, losing energy, and spiraling into the nucleus. A mathematical description of the emission lines produced by hydrogen was discovered by the scientist Balmer, but it only worked for hydrogen and atoms with a single electron. So we're going to go on and see how Bohr's model of the atom allowed us to then understand atomic spectra and energy levels within the atoms. So it says that Niels Bohr introduced the idea of energy levels in 1913. Electrons would occupy orbits of fixed size and energy, and the larger the orbit, the more energy the electron would have. So Bohr's model of the atom involved a positively charged nucleus in the centre of the atom, with electrons then being able to occupy well-defined energy levels, which he termed excited states, E1, E2 and E3 and so on, with the energy level closest to the nucleus being termed the ground state. And he then decided to think about these energy levels in a more kind of straight or linear form, with this kind of ladder structure shown on the right here. So here we've got less energy, i.e. decreasing energy going down the way, where we've got the ionization level at the top, which is thought to be at E equals zero joules, and then we have some excited states, and then the ground state E0 down the bottom. And from higher physics, you might remember some of these features of the Bohr model, which we'll quickly go through. So you should remember that electrons are in circular orbits around the nucleus. The electron orbits correspond to energy levels. Electrons can only occupy certain energy levels, i.e. the energy of the electrons is quantized. Electrons in the lowest energy orbit are said to be in the ground state. Electrons can gain energy to move to higher energy levels, i.e. excited states, or lose energy to drop down energy levels. And when an electron is completely removed from an atom, it is said to be ionized. An electron in the ionized state is defined as having zero potential energy, and all energy levels within an atom have negative values. And they have negative values because of this second last statement here. Because we say that the ionization level at the top is defined as being at zero joules, and anything below that must be a negative value. It then goes on to say that Bohr postulated that electrons can orbit in these permitted stable orbits without emitting radiation, and that the angular momentum of the electrons in these orbits is quantized. So this helps to explain why the electrons don't spiral in towards the nucleus of an atom. So this idea of quantization of angular momentum means that the allowed orbit of an electron must have an angular momentum which is an integer multiple of h over 2 pi. That's Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. That is, we have mvr equals nh over 2 pi, or if I skip down here, Remember from the rotational motion topic, the angular momentum has the symbol L, and this was equal to mvr. So we can rewrite the above as L equals nh over 2 pi instead, as a simpler form. So we have angular momentum L is equal to an integer value of Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. It's this integer multiple giving us the quantization. But this is the form that you'll see on the relationship sheet in the exam. So we have mvr equals nh over 2 pi, where m is the mass of the electron measured in kilograms. Remember that value is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms from your data sheet. v is the linear velocity of the electron in meters per second. r is the radius of the orbit measured in meters. 
n is the principal quantum number and takes an integer value of 1, 2, 3, etc. and also has no units. And lastly, h is Planck's constant with a value of 6.6c times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds from the datasheet. So you could be expected to answer some questions to try and calculate the angular momentum of an electron in a certain orbit, for example, or the linear velocity or the radius of the electron in the orbit. Lastly, it's worth noting that Bohr's energy level diagrams were able to explain the spectral lines seen for hydrogen, as shown here, for example. So you can see that electrons can drop energy levels producing photons of light, which correspond to certain frequencies of light on the hydrogen emission spectrum. So if I click play here, you'll see that this drop in energy level from here to here corresponds to this red line on the spectra. And we can keep doing that for different energy levels. So here we have four spectral lines, one, two, three, and four, which correspond to the four transitions seen on this energy level diagram. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.